Comic book movies are great. And by great, I mean some are great and some are horrible. But even terrible comic book movies occasionally have redeeming moments. And that's why we're here, to look at five comic book movies that somehow have scenes bordering on spectacular. Bear in mind there will be spoilers, but at the same time, who cares? Because you know, all of these are crap. Spider-Man 3. What a letdown. Still, some people believe that it's better than the last two, but that's neither here nor there. Spider-Man 3 broke what should have been a pretty solid trilogy of films. I mean, we got a watered down and miscast version of Venom that Sam Raimi was clearly forced to shoehorn in. An extreme ski mask snowboarding goblin. Boring old lady stories that go nowhere. And yeah, you know, the dancing, I just... I can't very well not mention this. Though I feel with some minor changes, this movie could have worked. But as it turns out, those changes aren't apparent, and it doesn't. Still, there are a couple of scenes that do. In particular, the underground Sandman-Spider-Man fight. But more importantly, that scene that has Sandman willing himself back into existence after being sandman -ified. It's a beautiful moment, having the love for his daughter being the literal reason for his survival in a scene really enhanced by Christopher Young's score. But this marvel of special effects is over all too quickly. And then it's back to the dancing and the crying and the boring stories about nothing. We were very good swimmers. And it was a beautiful day and he said, let's swim to the island. And at the island, we found a Shut up! No one cares! The Fantastic Four movies have not had a good run, have they? But who knows, maybe this latest one will turn it around. Despite Chris Evans and a pretty decent thing suit, I guess, not much else here is worth mentioning. Except that Fantastic Four 2 Rise of the Silver Surfer has one pretty decent scene. The arrival of the Silver Surfer, looking pretty comic accurate by the way, leads into a pursuit from Johnny Storm through New York City. It's tense and exciting and it looks great. Like I said though, it's just a shame about pretty much everything else in these two movies. Such as this moment. You know what's weird about this sequence? There must have been more people going, yeah, no, we should definitely keep this in, than people against it. How the hell does that happen? Wolverine Origins is terrible. There are no two ways about it. It's just missing so many good things. Performances, special effects, a version of Patrick Stewart that's not terrifying to look at. It's just the worst. That being said, there's a brief sequence at the beginning of this film that is, and I'm not exaggerating here, truly amazing. Showing Wolverine and Sabretooth montaging their way through history, depicting battles from the American Civil War to World War I to D-Day, right up to where the movie kicks into gear. And by kicks into gear, I mean completely derails as nothing good in it ever happens again. If you have never watched this movie, do yourself a favor and continue not to watch it because it's bad and everyone involved in it should be kicked into an active volcano. Can I just preface this one by saying I don't hate Superman Returns. In fact, I kind of like it. Yes, it's overly long and it lacks action and Lex Luthor's plan is again to do a real estate thing or something. And yes, the finale is just Superman lifting a big thing. And I guess that's my point. A lot of people hate this movie, and I can understand why. However, there's no denying that that plane catch scene is incredible. In lesser hands, this moment would have just had Superman taking it and then gently placing it back on the Earth, but here, he systematically tears its wings off as it spins wildly through the sky before catching the plane in a baseball field as it buckles under its own weight. It's a great reintroduction of the character, so much so that Brian Singer wishes now in hindsight that he opened the movie with this. No. Superman Returns did not set the world on fire. But Man of Steel was also far from perfect. A truly great modern Superman movie has yet to come. But at least these were both better than Green Lantern. Green Lantern is the worst. Like, from the get-go, straight out of the gate. It opens with this dreary monologue that attempts to break down the 70 plus years of Green Lantern history that simply manages to confuse audience members who were unfamiliar with the character and having diehard fans thinking, well, this isn't very good, is it? And then it's just a mad dash to show as many guys as possible with big heads all the way to the finish. But what a finish! Post credits, we get Sinestro embracing the fear, becoming the greatest Green Lantern villain of all. What an amazing scene, and with the promise of amazing things that will never come. Not for this Green Lantern anyways. So well done Green Lantern, you managed to squeeze out a solid 25 seconds in an 144 minute film. Thanks everyone, and if you like this, maybe you'll like this video here on the top 5 brutal Batman murders, I guess. I'll link that below and at the end of this video, if you'd like to see that along with 
Oh, I don't know, something else. I'll put something else there also. Also, I have a podcast. It's called The Weekly Planet. Some people say they don't hate it, which I believe is the greatest compliment of all. You can find that below or on iTunes or at the terrific comicbookmovie.com. But what's your favorite scene from a bad comic book movie? And you can't say the basketball scene from Catwoman because that is probably the worst thing that has ever happened in all of history and space and time. But if you do want to leave your thoughts on that, please feel free to do so below. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.